Now we're going to move on to having D3 and SVG kind of talk to each other. Um, so instead of writing all of this SVG ourselves, we're going to learn how to use D3 uh, to kind of work with all of this and how to kind of connect it with data. So we're going to be using two different files here, 02SVG and D3.html, but then also 02SVG and D3.js, so two separate files here. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what we've got here. Um, down on this page, we have a nice little SVG. It's got four rectangles. It's got four circles. We can see them here. Then inside of our JavaScript file, ignore the first line and the last line. We'll talk about them later. The important thing is we have some cities right here and we have some numbers right here. So this is a, let's call it a list of dictionaries if we're talking about uh, Python, but if we're talking about JavaScript, we would call this an array of objects. So this right here is uh, just like a dictionary in Python, but in JavaScript, you call it an object. And this is a array of them, which you would call a list in Python. So in the same way that this here is a list or an array, um, I'll probably you know, fall back into bad habits of calling them both. So the most important thing that we want to do in our life is console.log all the time, all the time. So we're gonna say console.log hello world just so we can check that this JavaScript file is working. So we refresh. We don't see hello world written anywhere on this page. That's because when you use console.log, it logs to the console. You can find the console um, by either inspecting and then clicking console here, uh, command option I, or view developer JavaScript console. So if we go here, this is where it should be showing up, but it actually is not showing up here. The reason why it's not showing up is when you have a JavaScript file and you want to use it from an HTML file, you have to say, hey, include my file inside of this HTML. So we need to say script src equals 0 to svg and d3.js. This is the way that we say HTML file. We love you, you're great, but please go talk to this JavaScript file to find out more things to do. So what's gonna happen is this code is going to load. It's gonna hit this point where it says script src, blah, 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 and then it's gonna go out and include this other file. So I'm gonna save, I'm gonna refresh, and it works great. Hello world, life is perfect, life is good. We actually need to level this up a little bit though, because since we are programming in D3, we need to include the D3 library in our code. Before we did some magic stuff uh, in class where we typed D3 dot scale linear here, and then we made a linear scale. If I run this code, it's not gonna work because D3 is not included in this page. If we were using Python, this is where we would do something like uh, import pandas or import beautiful soup or import whatever. When we're dealing with JavaScript though, you need to do something like this script src equals blah, 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 blah. Now, if we look at the files that we have, none of these files here are d3.js. We have a tooltip library that goes along with D3, but we don't have the actual D3 library. And that's because we're gonna rely on the goodwill of the internet to give it to us. So if we go to cdnjs.com, this is a website that hosts different JavaScript libraries. Uh, we talked a little bit more about the pros and cons of this in class, but basically you search for a library such as D3. They have pretty much every library ever. Um, and then it gives you the location of the JavaScript file. So I can look at this URL and it's a nice minified version. So it looks like trash, it's impossible to read. Um, and I can actually just take this line right here 
and say script src equals, and then it will add it right there. Now, the downside, well, there are a lot of downsides. Um, if I'm using this from the internet, if I'm not connected to the internet, it won't be able to download D3. Uh, if, let's say, cdnjs.thodfer.com gets taken over by hackers, I'll be injecting hacked code into everyone's page. Uh, there, there's a lot of downsides, but it's also really convenient. We don't have to juggle so many files. And in the future, in a future video, in a future class, we're gonna figure out another way to do this um, that kind of lives on our machine but doesn't require us to write a bunch of different code, except it actually does require a bunch of different code. It's just a different way uh, to kind of operate. So in this case, we're gonna use a CDNJS. Uh, there are other CDNs. CDN means Content Delivery Network. Uh, it's basically just a server that will give you files that is not your server. Uh, or maybe you have hundreds of servers distributed across the world because you want to serve files to a bunch of people quickly across the world. So it just means, you know, it's not on our machine. So if we refresh now, um, this time it's going out and getting D3, and we can do D3.scale linear. No, it's not working. Force refresh. Uh-oh, something terrible has happened. So let's debug this. Was it that I just didn't save? Yep. So when you make a change in your code here, we've talked about this before, but if you see a little circle up here, that means that you have not saved. So Command S to save, refresh over here, and now D3 scale linear works wonderful. So what we want to do is we want to reach out and edit things on this page using the power of D3. So we're gonna do that in our uh, SVG file over here, or in our, sorry, JavaScript file over here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go out and grab this rectangle. If we were using beautiful soup, we might use something like .find, .findall, .search. It's kind of the same thing when we're using D3. So we can do D3.select rectangle. Save, refresh, and nothing happens to any of the rectangles on the page because we didn't tell it to do anything. Um, we could do things like remove rectangles, but that seems counterproductive. What I want to do is change the color of the rectangle. So color uh, is the fill attribute. So I'm gonna say change the attribute called fill, make it be pink. Save, refresh, and wonderfully enough, a single one of our rectangles has turned pink. Now, we probably want to work with all of the rectangles and not just one of them. So what we're gonna do is change select to be select all. I'll save and I'll refresh and wonderfully enough, there we go. We have all four turned pink. Next most important thing you probably wanna do with these bars if we're gonna actually make them useful is change their width. So in the same way that I say dot ATTR fill pink, I could go down here and say width should be 300. That would work great, but I'm repeating myself here between these two here. Conveniently enough, uh, for a lot of JavaScript, and especially in D3, you can just chain these things together. This is called method chaining. And it's the idea that first we select, then we change the fill to pink, and then we change the width to 300, and we could just keep going and going and going and going. And in D3, you end up going and going and going and going, and it looks a little bit crazy in the end, but you know, so it goes. So I'll save, I'll actually change this so we can see it shift a little bit. And there we go. All of these now have the width of 250 and they are pink. If we wanted to change another attribute, We'd keep doing ATTR, blah, 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 and it would get longer and longer and longer and longer. 
I don't think that looks nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to enforce some style guidelines with the way that we code D3. This is the way that we're going to do it. Um, before every attribute, we're going to hit enter and we're going to indent a little bit. And because JavaScript is such a friendly language, it's not going to yell at us. If this were Python, it would say, what are you doing? You're trying to go to a new line. You're trying to indent in crazy ways. It's totally fine. Everything's cool. Um, for example, we have a semicolon at the end of the line here. In JavaScript historically, you put a semicolon at the end of every line. And you know, if we save and refresh, everything works great. Uh, if we delete, 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 everything still looks great. Because JavaScript tries its best to understand what we want to do and then tries to do it. Whereas something like Python is a little bit more hardcore about us following all of the rules. By leaving out semicolons, some people might get angry at us, but it makes cutting and pasting D3 a lot easier. For example, if I wanted to change the stroke of this, I could just copy and paste that ATTR and then make stroke black. But if there had been a semicolon at the end, it would have caused all sorts of problems because you can't put a semicolon right here because that's saying this is the end of the statement and then JavaScript would get confused about this part. If we open up the console, we see uncut syntax error, unexpected token, period. This right here lists the file that we have an error in and the line it's on. If we click it, it will actually go highlight where we're at. My window's not really big enough, so you'll just have to believe me. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to get rid of that. And then refresh. And I don't like that stroke, to be honest. So that's all we need to do. Um, and we can end up doing the exact same thing with these circles over here. So I'll just cut and paste this. And I'm going to say, hey, D3, go grab every single circle. Make the fill turquoise and set the radius to, let's say, be 20. I'm going to save, refresh, and there we go. We can make it a little bit bigger. 30, how about that? Wonderful, what a delight. So this is the basics of how you connect D3 and SVG. You use dot select all to grab the elements on the page, then you use ATTR to change different things about them. Next up, we're going to learn how to connect this to scales and how to use this data along with our D3.